Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Sade, and this is my new channel, Sharcy Speaks. I'm going to be talking about the six workplace woos, like what you have to deal with in the workplace and how to handle these situations. I have been in a workforce since I was 18. I am now 34, so I have experienced a lot working at places like, you know, um, retail, dispatch centers, call centers. And so I want to um, put out there my experiences and how I handled with situations and maybe how you can handle situations or would like to. And so I want to start off with co-worker relationships. And I know that when you're on a job, you develop friendships, right? Like you're not always just going to go to work and just work. You're always going to get attached to someone or have an interest because you're there at that job, even if it's part time, I'm going to say four to 12 hours a day. So you're going to have those relationships and, you know, you're going to have conversations with people and things like that. So, um... I know with my experience um, having coworker relationships, it can either go left or it could be, you know, friendships that develop in that. And so, especially in retail, you meet a lot of people, even coworkers, or sorry, not coworkers, but even, you know, uh, customers. You know, in retail, there's like always reoccurring customers. The majority of the time, the same people will come in every now and again, and you just develop that relationship with them. And it may not even turn into a friendship. It's just, hey, how you doing? You know, you develop that clientele. And in retail, you can have clientele. So um, I know working as a dispatcher for three years, 911 uh, dispatcher, I was on, the schedule was nice. Like, I love the schedule. But you're there for 12 hours. So, or you're there for like 6 to 12 hours, I believe. Part-time was like maybe four to six hours. I'm not sure. I work full time. So I was there all the time. And even doing, um, you know, overtime, you know, overtime could be like 16 or four more hours. And I developed friendships. And then there were some friendships that I, you know, that just did not work out. And so, you know, I'm going to use an example of things that can go wrong that has went wrong with me and how I handle things. Sometimes things can be really awkward. So you want to kind of keep things on a low because who wants to get into fights at work? Like <laughs> I don't go to me personally. I don't go to work to fight I go to work for the money like that's how I get paid now unless I'm a boss that's a different story I don't have to deal with none of that right so I remember I was in a situation and this was like before um I was working with um a transport company and then it merged into a 911 dispatch company I don't want to say any names but if you know me then you know you'll know what that is and so you know I had a, I was, you know, very cool with this, this one, um, you know, coworker and she was leaving the, the dispatch center and, you know, everything was all good. I congratulated her and I wanted her to win. I wanted her to see her in a better situation because I know like it wasn't an easy job. It was very, very hectic. It was, it was very stressful. It, it was like one of those good stresses I guess like it was it was stress so um long story short like she thought I was laughing at her and actually me and some other co-workers was actually laughing at another person <laughs> and it was just more like a joke so she came over and was like hey you know like what's so funny and I was like girl we're just talking about something else and I kid you not she told a few people that she wanted to fight me and at this point I'm like well what's going on you know like I didn't I don't what's that so now I had to be like okay I know that's not gonna happen right I just know that somebody is just mad pissed about something probably wanted you know at that point I feel like when some sometimes when 
people are leaving the workplace, they don't want to leave in a good light. They want to leave in a negative light. They want to show you or they, they've been wanting to say something. And so I always say, you always hear me say in a video, like somebody always wants to say something so badly. And it was just really ridiculous. So at this point, I was, I didn't confront it. I didn't say anything. All I did was mind my business. And it wasn't even so much as awkward. It was just like, nobody has time. And so I didn't even give it, like I heard of it, but I didn't even give it no light. I just kept it moving. Good luck. And nothing happened. You know, I didn't put any type of um, attention to it. I just prayed that she just kept on going to her new job and that things work out for her. No ill will at all. So, you know, I've also had other friend, you know, another friendship where I just stopped talking to people. And, you know, because I'm in these work places, it's really hard to work with people that you don't talk to anymore. But because I didn't give it no mind, because I didn't give it no light, um, I let things blow over. And sometimes when, when you have co-worker relationships and, you know, you fall out with people at work, I think that it's normal because it's like a family. It's like a big family. And so I think that when you let things blow over, then you guys come back together and then you're like, okay, we could talk this out. I mean, I've had a couple of people that I talk things out with and everything's fine. Sometimes you just got to let things be when it comes to coworker relationships and let it blow over. And so the next thing I want to talk about is micromanaging. Don't we all deal with, you know, the, the chippy you know, managers and they always want to micromanage you and they always, and, and you feel like you're being scrutinized or you feel like you're being zeroed in on. So just from what I've learned in the workplace is that's going to happen. Um, I think that we, you know, when it comes to micromanaging, I think that there's somebody on that manager's end that's in their ear about whatever they see about you or your work or how you're doing things and then that manager has to get on you and it may seem like you know they are just on your behind about things and they're just oh my god they're on me and I I've felt that way before I've, I've felt that way but I think that with micromanaging you just have to be patient because once whatever it is that they're on you about do it get it done no talkbacks just get it done. And I I can guarantee you that once you do whatever it is that they feel is bothering them or whatever it is that, you know, they're trying to get you to do, just do it. And eventually the micromanaging will stop. There's a lot of times at workplaces where you shouldn't even give it I'm telling you, there's a lot of things, including micromanaging, that you shouldn't even give the time of day because it's a lot of, you know, oh, my lips are all chapped. I'm talking so much, <laughs> but it's a lot of, um, you know, because you don't know what that manager's dealing with, right? When they're on you about something. So just think of it as, well, somebody's on them. So let me just go ahead and just knock it out whatever it is um i want to also talk about rude managers now when we talk about micromanaging i think micromanaging is kind of different a little bit different than just having a rude obnoxious manager and i have dealt with um the last manager you know at the dispatch center that i had um, even working at the medical center, I've had, you know, managers that will pretty much after a while, you know, treat you like crap and just not really, you know, 
treat you like a human being. And I think that's a little different than micromanage. I think micromanaging is just a manager who's trying to get something done and they're trying to figure out how to get you to do something. <laughs> and they're kind of going a little overboard versus a manager who's rude, who takes their title a little too far. And I have an example when I worked as a dispatcher. And I mean, I wasn't the best dispatcher, but I feel like I did. I tried to do the right thing on this job and I learned a lot of lessons, but I did have a manager that, you know, was, you know, she came back, she was just on, like, on it, okay? Um, and so as a dispatcher, I did have a, I was in a union. So every time there was a meeting, I would always ask, and, and this is very important. If you are a part of a, a union, you need to always have, um, you always need to have somebody there from the union, a union rep in these meetings with you because then things go wrong, they're not documented, they don't know what's going on. So basically I asked for, when we had a meeting, I asked for a union rep and I can say that this lady went into a rage. She went into a full rage and I was like, what is wrong with her? Because I should be in a rage. Like I'm, you know, I feel like because I had to do some type of like 30 day thing because, you know, I messed up on a call and, you know, it happens. And I aced the 30 days, but I was just like, why? Like before I aced it, I was always go. I had to do a meeting every week, every week, like in the middle of me taking 911 calls, I'm in meetings every week. So I was like, you know, I, I need my my union rep. And she went into a rage. Like she was banging on the desk, the, the table, and she stormed out. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I'm supposed to have a union rep. Like I know, I, you know, I know what, how it's supposed to go. I know how I want it to go. And I want somebody here with me. And nobody said anything. And I think that that was the issue is that nobody's said, hey, like this is not how you're supposed to deal with your, you know, employees. Like you can't act like that. But me personally, I am at work. I know how to conduct myself. So, of course, I was just like, all right, I, I guess she needs time to. Meanwhile, I'm the one who has to be in here in these meetings and I have to ace this 30 day plan. And I'm just sitting there like really confused. So with that being said, as calm as I was, because I feel like you have to still keep your cool in workplaces no matter what and I know that it's hard I know it's it's frustrating but trust me if you keep your cool who can say anything you know mm, parched and so then she apologized and so that to me spoke volumes about myself because at the end of the day you don't really go to work to make friends. You don't go to work to kiss, but but you have but you do go to work to do your job. So that was my thing. Like I don't come here for that. I don't come here to, you know, deal with somebody else's anger issues. And so knowing that I kept my cool, you know, that's all you could do is just What's the word I'm looking for? That's all you could do is watch out for yourself and make sure that when you're going to work, you're not the one acting like that. But yeah, when we have people that are, you know, um, above us like managers, we really need managers to be, you know, on their P's and Q's too. I get it, you know, you have a different title, but you have to learn how to work with the people that's under you because what makes a workplace good management and i think a lot of people 
get that really twisted. I think people get these titles and then they forget that they were in that seat and they forget that they were in that spot. And now they don't know how to act. So, But you as an employee have to know how to act. You have to know how to just keep your cool because at the end of the day, you know, jobs come a dime a dozen. You know what I mean? Of course, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> Thank God. But, you know, when we're dealing with rule managers, stay on, like, stay cool because, you know, they're going through stuff. You're going through stuff, you know, and what matters is how you approach it. And eventually, you know, whatever happens with that manager, that's just what's going to happen. You have to put that in God's hands. And that's that's what I did. And, you know, I I didn't show my behind not one bit. I was just like, okay. Um, So my next thing is being a guinea pig. So I call it being a guinea pig. I don't know if anybody, like, if you can relate, please, please put uh, subscribe and put down in the comments if you can relate to any of this, but specifically being a guinea pig. And when I say guinea pig, that's what I was when I did, when I worked as the non-medical transport for, for that part of it. Um, so I was like one of the first... Um, people so I'm gonna say this because I was one of the first people to um, to be a part of the Sutter uh, transport coordinator um, company so that right there it was crazy I went from working at Sears to doing this and so this is like I, I went to school for medical assisting but I never became a medical assistant can you believe it I know I I guess I just went to the school for the experience because I still have not been a medical assistant. But this was like my opportunity to actually get into healthcare. Um, so, and what's crazy is I was actually in between working at um, in Davis, California. Um, and I was I was in be I was either gonna do the Sutter transports so I was going to work as a temp MA so that was my chance to actually be a medical assistant but I picked this job <laughs> um and so anyway like I was one of the first in the group and then it just expanded and so when you're a guinea pig at a job it is very stressful because for one you're testing out everything you're you're the setup you're you know one of the first people to do this and you're being thrown into the wool you know into the lion's den because no one knows what's going on i mean there's a plan there's a job there's the description and then there's the training but you're having to go out there and See if it's going to work. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's kind of cool because right now I'm a guinea pig for um, the EDD. So now I work as a fact finding agent. So that's a new title. And now I'm a guinea pig again. <laughs> I'm like, does God want me to be a guinea pig at jobs? I don't know. But um, being a guinea pig for a job, it takes a lot of patience. Um, it's not easy, but once you, it's just like any other job, except this is a new title. So they're just trying to figure out if they're gonna, they need the help, right? And they're trying to figure out if they can actually keep that title going, if they're going to stick with it, if it's, is it going to fail? Is it, there's a lot of obstacles then there's a, a, like, a lot of rewards to being a guinea pig. Job guinea pig, I guess, if you want to call it that. And so, it's a lot of changes too. So, when you're being a guinea pig for a job, you just have to have 
the the understanding that things change every day i mean i'm dealing with that now like i know for Sutter, like it every day, every week it was a new paper that came out and they were like, well, now we have to change this and, and no, we got to do it this way. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's a headache, but it's very rewarding because that is a title that you can say, hey, you know, like I'm the one of the first and, you know, I'm trying to, you know, and then it helps you in the long run. You can put it on your resume. You know, it it shows a lot of not power, but it shows a lot of prestige when you are one of the first people to be on that job title and to be doing it first. So, you know, just have, again, a lot of patience, a lot of understanding um, and try the best you can to just stay afloat. There's going to be a lot of frustration, but just try your best to do what you have to do your job the best that you can. Things are going to change. You know, not everything is going to be perfect. Um, you're going to be going through a lot of trainings. Everybody has to, even the people above you, managers, um, you know, bosses, whatever, they're going to be changing things up. They're going to be having meetings. They're going to have to tell you what to do and, and what not to do and how to go about it. It's, it's a lot, but it's, it's really not that bad. Um, and so, you know, last but not least is the recovery. And when I say recovery, um, it's recovering from dealing with workplace stresses. I think that when it comes to workplace stresses, we really all need to find a way to diffuse. We have to find a way to rectify within ourselves because you can't you can't control everything, especially on a job. Jobs are not easy. You know, if we all didn't have to work, you know, we'd be millionaires. We wouldn't have to deal with this. But um, you know, find on your breaks find something that's going to that you're going to have to relax go on walks take your dogs out if you have them um, play with your cat if you have one um, jot down in a journal listen to some music watch your favorite uh, shows um, workplace relationships and workplace uh, you know situations can be really stressful and so we're all dealing with it, especially during the pandemic. Like it has been so much. <laughs> it's been so stressful for everybody. So therapy is always needed. Um, I know I've had therapy and I will talk about my job. And, you know, especially during the pandemic, it was tough. Like um, when I um, left Sutter, it was you know, I had to leave. It, it was it was tough. I wasn't getting the hours. So I don't feel like it was their fault. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of things changed. And that was one of them. So um, that is my, what was that, top five uh, workplace uh, woos. Um, so just, you know, when it comes to the workplace, just take it easy. You're always going to go through something, but you just have to find a common uh, solution. And just, you know, don't let anything get to you. Um, don't let people get to you. Like, it, everything is going to be fine. I think that we all have to reset, like press a reset button in order to you know, go back to work the next day. A lot of people can't go back to work the next day after certain situations that has happened and it's perfectly normal. But everything is gonna be fine and you just have to, you know, put your work first. We're all human, you know, everybody has their little situations. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to separate friendships from workplace or just separate humans from you know just having a bad day so 
thank you everyone for looking at my video and if you have any comments or suggestions or advice for anybody when it comes to a workplace situation especially workplace relationships please comment at the bottom and also please subscribe to my channel I'm gonna try to have um, videos coming like every weekend I work full time so I'm trying to make time for them but just subscribe and I'll bring out more all right everybody talk to you soon bye